Hey everybody, so welcome back here. We're going to be going over these exercises on a dot and cross products. If you haven't done the exercises yet, I suggest you pause the video here, go check the link in the description below so you'll find a PDF on the website there. You can download that and do the exercises first, then come back here and we'll go over the answers. Okay, so let's go over the answers now. Uh, we're going to compute the dot product of vectors A and B using the angle method. Okay, so this is talking about how the dot product of A dotted with B is equal to A, B, cosine of the angle between them. Okay, so the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the cosine of the angle between them, and we're calling this angle phi. Okay, well, what is phi going to be? Phi is going to be, uh, well, it's gonna be 180 degrees minus 40 degrees minus 20 degrees. Okay, so there, right, you can see this is 180 minus 40 minus 20, that'll give us our phi, which is a separation between the vectors here, and we can see that that is going to be equal to 100 and 20 degrees. Okay, so uh, that's going to be our phi. Now we can uh, calculate the dot product now. I think that's all we need to do, right? So this is going to be equal to A, which is 10 meters, times B, which is 7 meters, times the cosine of 120 degrees. All right, well, let's uh, bring out our calculator 120 degrees cosine. And we're going to multiply this by 70. And so we get an answer of negative 35 meters squared. Great. Okay, let's take a look at uh, using now the component vector method. Okay, what does that mean? Well, we're going to use the other version of the dot product. Uh, the other the other way of calculating the dot product rather and that's going to be the formula where a dot b is equal to ax times bx plus a y times b y plus a z times b z okay so in this case we're going to have to find the component vectors for a and b and then we can plug them into this formula and hopefully we're going to get an answer that is the same Hopefully. Uh, let's try it out. So let's find the components A of X, A of Y, and A of Z. Well, A of Z we know is going to be zero. We can see that right away. Uh, A is in the XY plane. But for these others, we're going to have to do a little bit of a calculation, right? So for the AX vector here, uh, or AX component, it's going to be here. We're going to see that's going to be equal to uh, a cosine of theta, and we'll call this theta A, and that means AY is gonna be A sine of theta A, okay? And I just wanna make a note here that theta A is 20 degrees, right? That's this angle right here. We're also going to have a theta B, which is going to be this angle, right, to vector B, and that is going to be equal to, uh, what is that? Well, that's gonna be equal to 180 degrees minus 40, right? So that's gonna be equal to 140 degrees for theta b. Uh, so let's, uh, let's actually do this calculation right now. So a cosine theta a is going to be equal to 10 meters times the cosine of 20 degrees. And this is going to be 10 meters times the sine of 20 degrees. And we can do this calculation real fast. Okay, so uh, 20 degrees, we'll take the cosine of that. And uh, times 10, that's gonna be 9.40, 9.40 meters. And now let's do uh, sine of 20 degrees. And multiply by 10, it's gonna be 3.42 meters right so there we go we've got our uh a components uh, now let's do our b components right b sub x b sub y and b sub z and again b sub z is going to be zero because vector b is in the xy plane 
Okay, so uh, b sub x, we're gonna be using the same formulas as we have over here. Uh, so we're just gonna plug in the numbers directly. This is going to be seven meters times the cosine of theta b, which is 140 degrees. And then b sub y is going to be seven meters times the sine of theta b, which is 140 degrees. And we can do that real quick. So 140, and we're going to take the cosine of that and multiply this by seven. That's going to be negative 5.36, negative 5.36 meters. And now we're going to do uh, b sub y. So we're going to take the sine of 140, multiply by seven, and we get uh, 4.50. Okay, so this is equal to 4.50 meters. Okay, so now that we've gotten all of our components, we can plug them into our dot product formula. Okay, so let's do that. And we're going to get that uh, a dot b is equal to, okay, ax times bx. That's going to be 9.4 meters times bx, which is negative 5.36 meters. And that's going to be plus aybby. So that's 3.42 meters times 4.50 meters. Okay, well, let's do the math real fast. So what do we have here? We've got uh, 9.4 multiplied by 5.36. That gives us uh, this number here. That should be a negative number. Okay, so let's store that in memory. And then we have uh, 3.42 times 4.5. And we're going to add that to the negative number we have stored in memory. And when we recall it, that's going to be negative 34.994. So that's going to round off to negative 35.0 meters squared. And you know what? That looks like a pretty good match to me. So I think we, uh, I think we did it correctly. Um, this just is showing you that we have two different ways to compute the dot product. We can use the angle between them and their magnitudes, or we can decompose them if we have them in IJK format in, in a component form, then we can just directly compute from the components. All right, great. Let's look at question number two. All right, for question number two, we are given two vectors, A and B, and we want to find the angle uh, phi between them. Okay, this is how we're going to do this answer, um, this exercise here. Okay, we know that A dotted with B is equal to magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the cosine of the angle between them. Okay, so that's the same formula we used right there. But we also know that A dot B is equal to <laughs> AX BX plus AY BY plus AZ BZ, which is the formula that we used here. So what we're doing is we're going to set these two formulas equal to each other and then solve for phi. What that means is we're going to have cosine of phi equals ax bx plus ay by plus az bz all over the magnitudes of a B. And then what we could do is we can take the inverse cosine of both sides and we will be able to now solve for this angle phi. So that's all we have to do here. So we already have the components. So we know AX, BX, AY, BY, AZ, BZ. We know what they are, but we don't know yet what the magnitudes of A and B are. So First, let's calculate the magnitudes of A and B. Okay, so the magnitude of A is going to be equal to AX squared plus AY squared plus AZ squared, and then we're going to take the square root of all of that. Okay, this is the Pythagorean theorem for three dimensions, right? Okay, so let's do this. Let's plug in some numbers. Uh, AX is going to be, uh, okay, so this is nine squared, and then plus two squared plus negative five squared, and we take the square root of all of that. 
Okay, so this is equal to, uh, what is this? Uh, 81 plus 4 plus 25. Let's, uh, let's see what that is equal to. I've got a 81 plus 4 plus 25, and then we take the square root of all of this. Square root of 110 is going to be 3.24. Okay, so this is, oh, sorry, no, I took the double square root. The square root of 110 is 10.5. Okay, so let's say this is equal to 10.5. All right, so there we have the magnitude of vector A. Let's do the same thing for vector B. Okay, B is going to be equal to negative 7 squared. Negative uh, 7 squared plus 4 squared uh, plus negative 3 squared, and then we take the square root of all of that. Okay, so this is going to be uh, 49 plus 16 plus 9, and we take the square root of that, so let me do that. 49 plus 16 plus 9 is 74. We take the square root, and that's going to be 8.6. So B is equal to 8.6. So now we have the magnitude of B. All right, so we should now be able to just plug in all of our numbers and we're going to find our answer, right? So phi is equal to the inverse cosine of uh, AX nine times negative seven plus two times four plus negative five times negative three all over 10.5 times 8.6. Okay, so we've plugged in all of the numbers. Now we just have to calculate what these answers are going to be. Uh, okay, so what do we have here? Uh, well, uh, nine times seven, uh, nine times negative seven, this is going to be, okay, cos inverse cosine of uh, negative 63. Uh, plus 8, and then plus 15 over, uh, what do we have here? 10.5 uh, times 8.6 is equal to 90.3. Okay, so this is 90.3. And uh, we can continue on here. So we've got uh, 15 plus 8 minus 63 divided by 90.3, and then we're going to take the inverse cosine of this number here, and we get an angle of 116.3 degrees, 116.3 degrees, and that is our value here for phi, okay? So hopefully you got a number that is pretty close to this. This is going to be the angle between vectors A and B. There we go, great. Okay, now question three, we want to compute the magnitude and direction of the cross product of vectors A and B. Okay, so we're going to cross product now. Uh, now, we're gonna use the angle method and then we're going to use the component vector method. Okay, so these are the same vectors that we used with the dot product, but now we're doing a cross product. So what is the angle method going to be? Well, we're going to find, if you remember, our equation is that uh, a cross B is equal to A B sine of phi, okay? Now, we already know what phi is going to be here, right? Because we calculated this before. Uh, phi was 120 degrees. It's the same, the same vectors. So this is 120 degrees. So what we can do now is just plug in these numbers, right? So this is going to be 10 meters times 7 meters times the sine of 120 degrees. So let's do this calculation. We're going to have 120 degrees and we'll take the sine of it. And then we'll multiply this by 70. So that's going to equal 60.6. 60 60.6 meters squared. That's going to be our uh, value for uh, A cross B. But 
we also need a direction, okay? So A cross B should give us a vector with magnitude and direction. We've calculated the magnitude, okay? So remember that actually what we've done here is we've calculated the magnitude of A cross B. Now we need to add a direction. And in this case, since A and B lie in the XY plane, we can just use our right-hand rule, and we know that uh, A cross B is going to give us a vector that is now along the z-axis, right? So we can see that A cross B is going to give us some kind of vector along the z-axis, just like that, using the right-hand rule. And so how do we write this down? Very simply, we can write that A cross B is equal to 60.6 meters squared in the K hat direction. And there we go, magnitude and direction of the cross product should be finished. Okay, let's try this with the component vector method now. See if we can verify and get the same answer. Okay, so now we're going to use the component vector method to compute the cross product. Now, the equation here for the cross product is going to be kind of big and messy, and I never remember how to actually write it down. I, I've, I've just never memorized what all of the variables are gonna be. I do know that there's going to be some form where it's going to be a something, b something minus, a something, b something in the i hat direction, plus the same thing, minus a something, b something in the j hat direction, plus the same thing in the k hat direction. So I kind of remember that it's going to be of this form. But what are the exact A and B components? That I don't remember. Okay, so instead of remembering it, I just rederive it. So I'm going to have a little set of axes here, right? And this is going to be my X, Y, and Z axes. And I'm just going to draw some unit vectors on here really fast. So what do we've got here? We've got... Uh, There, we've got one, we've got another over here, and we've got another over here. So these are going to be my I hat, my J hat, and my K hat uh, unit vectors, okay? So with this little picture, I should be able to rederive all of the uh, different components that I need in my equation. So how does this work? Well, let's start with the uh, the I hat direction, okay? So I'm going to point my thumb in the I hat direction. I'm sort of doing the right hand rule backwards. I know my result of the cross product will be in the I hat direction. And so in order to get that, I'm going to have to cross a positive, uh, for a positive uh, I hat direction, I'm gonna cross an A sub Y with a B sub Z. And I can see that's what I'm gonna get. So A sub Y times a B sub Z. Okay, now, what if instead I cross a B sub Z, sorry, an A sub Z with a B sub Y? Well, now I see I get a negative I hat direction. And so that's what the second term is going to be. It's going to be an A sub Z and a B sub Y. And that's going to be a negative I hat direction. Okay, let's try the J hat direction. So I point my thumb in the desired final direction, the final result of the cross product, J hat. And in order to get this, I'm going to have to uh, multiply, I see I'm gonna to have to multiply an A sub Z with a B sub X, okay? A sub Z with a B sub X. And I know I'm just gonna to have to reverse it to get the negative, right? So I just reverse those. And finally, we're looking at the K hat direction. So I want my thumb pointing out of the screen in the K hat direction. So this is going to be an A sub X times a B sub Y, right? An A sub X times a B sub Y. And then I just reverse it 
for the last two terms. And there we go. I've re-derived the formula to calculate the cross product using components. Okay, what a wonderful achievement. Now we actually get to write down what all these components are. So we need uh, a sub x, a sub y, and a sub z. And we know a sub z is going to be zero because it's in the xy plane. And I've actually already computed these components. So I'm just going to copy them from what we had before. Uh, that's going to be 9.4 meters, 9.40 meters. And a sub y is 3.42. No sense in uh, doubling our work. All right, so we got b sub x, b sub y, and b sub z, which is, of course, zero. All right, what are these? This is negative 5.36. And B sub Y is 4.50. 4.50 meters. Okay, so now I've got my components. I've got my formula. I just have to plug them in. What we're going to see is that since we have a zero for A sub Z and for B sub Z, that wherever we have a BZ or an AZ, like here and here, all of these terms cancel out to zero. So we're only going to be left with this last final term with any actual values, right? So let's just simplify this now. We're going to say that for this equation, A cross B is going to be equal to AX times BY minus AY times BX in the k hat direction. So far, that's good because I know here our final answer is in the k hat direction. So the fact that we have a k hat direction only here, that's a good sign. Okay, let's actually do this now. Let's substitute this in. So what do we get? Uh, AX is 9.40. B sub Y is 4.50. I should have meters, right? And this is going to be minus A sub Y, which is 3.42 meters uh, times B sub X, which is going to be negative 5.36 meters. Okay, time for the calculator. 9.4 times 4.5. There we go. And then 3.42 times 5.36. We add that, and what do we get? There we go, 60.6. Okay, so this is going to be equal to 60.6 in the k hat direction. I forgot to uh, add the k hat direction there, but there we go. We got the final answer here, and it is exactly the same. So, no mistakes, we did get the answer, and uh, the angle method and the component method, they both worked out. Great. Okay, let's look at question number four here. Now, question number four asks us to find the cross product for A and B, and then also find the reverse, right? We're gonna find uh, B cross A. So, okay, that's fine, let's do this. We'll just borrow this equation that we wrote down over here. Okay, this is going to be our equation to calculate uh, the cross product. Let me shrink it down just a little bit. Okay, there we go. So uh, let's start plugging in some numbers, right? So A cross B is going to be equal to, uh, let's see, we've got uh, A sub Y is going to be a two, B sub Z is going to be negative three, and minus uh, A sub Z, which is going to be negative five, times B sub Y, which is going to be Four. Okay, so this gives us our i hat direction, and then this is going to give us uh, a sub z is going to be negative five. Uh, b sub x is going to be negative seven. Minus a sub x, which is nine, and b sub z, which is going to be negative three. Okay, so this gives us our j hat, our y component there. And finally here, we've got uh, A sub X, which is going to be nine times B sub Y, which is going to be four minus A sub Y, which is going to be uh, two and a B sub X, which is negative seven. Okay, so let me just, uh, in the 
k hat direction. Let me just go ahead and compute this real quick. Okay, so looks like uh, A cross B is going to be equal to 14I hat plus 62J hat plus 50K hat. And that's going to be our final answer here for the value of A cross B. We just have to plug in those numbers. It's actually not too difficult to compute, right? Okay, so now we're going to do the same thing for B cross A, except in this case, I'm going to rewrite this equation. I'm going to rewrite it and I'm going to use it uh, for a B cross A. So in this case, we're going to sort of reverse everything, right? It's going to be BYAZ minus BZ AY I hat plus BZ AX minus BX AZ j hat plus bx a y minus b y a x in the k hat direction okay so now that i've got that i should be able to just plug in the numbers so let me do that real fast Okay, and so we can see that B cross A is going to be equal to negative 14 I hat minus 62 J hat minus 50 K hat. That's the final answer here. And would you look at that? It's exactly equal to negative A cross B. And so this is showing that our anti-commutative property of the cross product actually checks out, right? So A cross B is equal to negative B cross A. Same magnitude, but the directions of all the component vectors are reversed. So that, uh, that shows the anti-commutative property pretty clearly just there. All right, so there we go. That's the exercises. Hopefully you got everything right. If you didn't and you see where you went wrong, then that's the important point. If you still have questions, let me know uh, what you're unclear about, what you're unsure about in the comments below. And if this helped you out, I would appreciate if you give me a sub and give me a like. And I'll be back with another lesson as we start looking at some more mechanics and some more physics in the future. So I hope to see you at the next lesson. All right, bye-bye.